Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button if you guys are enjoying the content that we're throwing up. And uh, make sure you guys hit the like button if you enjoy the video. And yeah, let's begin. So I was sitting here thinking about Avengers Endgame. And, and I actually tweeted out this, this funny picture. Um, like casual moviegoers are just like, man, like Avengers Endgame really does seem bleak. But it's like, well, I mean, but that's like not even the worst of it though. Like, like here's, okay, here's the thing. So, so for those of you guys who are like the casual moviegoer, in Marvel Comics, you've got, you've got some pretty dark events and stories that take place, right? Like at the end of the day, what was Infinity Gauntlet really? Infinity Gauntlet was more of like an action-packed story uh, than it was like a dark story, right? I mean, like half the life of the universe got snapped, uh, got snapped out of existence, but that was designed more to show the power of Thanos than just like how bad things got, right? I mean, you really found out how bad things got when you found out that Adam Warlock had basically just like used all the superheroes as cannon fodder as opposed to them actually having a chance. They were designed to be a distraction so the Silver Surfer could try to steal the gauntlet off of Thanos. Thanos, which didn't work. It was one of the coolest things. But in terms of like how dark it can get, y'all haven't seen anything yet. Like if you guys think Avengers Endgame is dark, y'all haven't seen anything. I mean, there's there's some dark stuff. Honestly, if, if, if I were Marvel and I wanted to do like an exceedingly dark story, I would do Thanos Imperative. The problem with that is you have to do like a lot of build up to it, right? Like, I mean, and, and you can even do like War of Kings if you wanted to, but like, yeah, Thanos Imperative, I mean, like that's the cancer verse, right? Like that's the alternate universe where like no one could die, where you have like the mini angled ones and all that kind of weird stuff. But it was basically a universe, um, Okay, so in Marvel Comics, I know you. I know a lot of you guys know of Captain Marvel, like Carol Danvers. Before her, before her, there was Marvel, who was this guy that was okay. He wasn't really that great of a character. A lot of the really old school fans will tell you like he was really really cool. He was never cool. And so so like there was basically Marvel of the Kree. And he ended up dying of cancer in like 1984's The Death of Captain Marvel. It was this graphic novel written by Jim Starlin. It was really, really cool, really interesting. Uh, kind of this nice send off when Thanos like escorted him to the realm of Mistress Death, considering the two of them have like always been enemies with each other. But what ended up happening is in the cancer verse, what Marvel did is he brought all the superheroes together and then using their combined power, destroyed Mistress Death. And so what it meant was that nobody in that universe could die. And because nobody could die, they all just ended up becoming like villains, right? Like the universe was just overrun with life like it was just just super packed it was it was kind of crazy you know because i mean it was just essentially like immortality but the avengers ended up becoming villains called the revengers and like it's kind of nuts like it's 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 kind of crazy what ends up happening at the end of that story is thanos brings uh mistress death into the realm of the cancerverse and ends up killing uh marvell which basically like you know, and like introduces like an aspect of herself back into that universe, which essentially like brings death to like the cancerverse and people just end up getting, you know, dying and different things like that. But the fact remains, like it's, it's, it's kind of a cool thing, but more so than that, if what you're doing is you're looking at the events of Avengers Endgame from a stance of like hope and saying like, well, man, things really don't seem hopeful for the heroes. No, 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 because they're gonna win, right? Like, I mean, like the events not playing out in such a way where things seem hopeless. It seems that way, but like, it's not. You wanna talk about a hopeless event, like look at the events of Annihilation. Like, Annihilation was nuts. I mean, it all really ended because of Galactus. Like, he's the only reason the heroes won. But dude, Annihilation was nuts. So what you have in, in Marvel Comics is you've got this place called the Negative Zone, right? And so like, like if you, you have like all these different universes, right? Like an infinite number of universes for an infinite number of possibilities, but there's only one Negative Zone. And each universe can access the Negative Zone in some form or fashion if they chose to. But the way it works in the Negative Zone is you've got like, you know, galaxies and solar systems and planets and stars and all kinds of cool stuff. But you've also got a guy came, a guy called Annihilus, who's who's like an, he's like an Anthrosian or something like that, or an Arthrosian, I can't remember exactly how you pronounce it. But basically, he's like this bug looking guy the issue is that Annihilus was afraid of death the only thing he was he was like Voldemort right like the one thing he was afraid of was dying so he was like he was like Voldemort before Voldemort and, and what ended up happening is that he had this device called the cosmic control rod which was basically the negative zone equivalent of the power cosmic which is what Galactus has and so realizing what the power cosmic was Annihilus sought to to use it as a means to like guarantee his immortality and so using another guy I can't remember what his name was but using another guy he basically like pierced access through the through a, something called the crunch into like the main marvel universe and then brought the annihilation wave which was like this colossal like this this astronomical army of like countless bugs when i say countless i mean like billions and billions and billions of billions it was enough to where it like it spread across the universe like a plague world after world after world fell to the power of the annihilation wave and when the when the annihilation event picks up what you basically got is like star lord peter quill 
and, and Richard Ryder Nova, who are leading like the United Planetary Front, I think it is, like the U, UPF or something along those lines. Anyway, it's what's left of, of like those worlds that haven't fallen. And literally the universe is like in ragtags. Like pretty much everything has been conquered. Like Thanos helped Annihil Annihilus capture Galactus. And then like, like basically Annihilus was like studying the power cosmic and like siphoning it off of Galactus. Silver Surfer was captured. Frankie Ray, one of the heralds of Galactus was captured. Um, I want to say Terax was captured. Like all these super powerful beings were captured by Annihilus, literally for the purpose of studying the power cosmic and then harnessing it. And it was kind of crazy because at the time that story was going on, Marvel had civil war. So like Richard Ryder realizing like they need help comes to earth, that's where the most powerful heroes are and it's like hey we need your help and they're all fighting over superhero registration so he's just like okay screw this he leaves he's like you guys can't even get your own your own crap together how could you possibly help to save the universe so he just ends up leaving but but like literally like it's just like it's 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 like what's left of like a free universe is in dire straits and like pretty much at the at the brink of its total destruction it ends up taking the freeing of galactus who annihilates two-thirds of the annihilation wave to basically save everybody so like it's just kind of mopping up after that but like it's it's crazy how like everything that's going on like everything that happens like it's pretty bleak you know but but even if you wanted to like move away from like an interdimensional event and or I'm, I'm sorry like a universal event and focus on something that's still earthbound you could do shadowland right like shadowland was a story that was written in 2010 a lot of people don't like it i absolutely loved it but shadowland was a story written in 2010 that basically had this concept called the beast and the beast was this this sort of demon entity that the hand worship right those of you guys who follow daredevil on netflix you have an organization called the hand which are like these super mystical ninjas from japan who can like resurrect people from the dead and like you know do all kinds of crazy stuff anyway what ends up happening is daredevil is possessed by the beast and then leads the hand in new york and creates like shadowland which is like this exactly what it sounds like this super like dark you know screwed up area and so basically it takes like all these combined heroes to like basically you know defeat like daredevil and, and it's kind of it's kind of nuts because you end up getting this fight between bullseye and daredevil where bullseye takes out like 20 something members of the hand and then faces off against daredevil in hand-to-hand -hand combat but still like like i mean that's really really dark in and of itself you've got uh enemy of the state where wolverine is kidnapped by the hand and hydra working together and they basically brainwash him and then send him on a mission to kill all the superheroes across the world there's a what if story where he successfully does i mean there's there's all kinds of like really really dark stories that you could do war of kings was really dark it wasn't really dark it was pretty good but it wasn't really dark. What it was is you basically had the Inhumans who were leading the Kree Empire due to like kind of a battle over leadership between Black Bolt of the Inhumans and I think it was Ronan the Accuser after Ronan destroyed the Supreme Intelligence. And then you had um, Vulcan who was a third Summers brother who took over a race called the Shi'ar and the two the two went to war. That's actually what created the rift in space that led to the Cancerverse. So like, it's all these different things that go on, but you've got Annihilation Conquest, which was a sequel to Annihilation, where um, Ultron tries to like conquer the universe and almost does. Like, there's a lot of really, really dark stories they can go with. And now that Marvel owns, or now that, yeah, Disney owns like Fox, which means they own like the X-Men and the Fantastic Four. Oh, there's all kinds of dark stuff. That you, you can do Jonathan Hickman's Fantastic Four story, where you learn about like all the tribes of the Inhuman cities. You've got the War of the Four Cities. You've got like, like the, the the like the bleak future you've got uh the mad celestials and like franklin richards coming from the future to like save everything i mean you, you could do like you could do the dark phoenix and the phoenix saga proper you could do nimrod all right so so here's the thing nimrod was really really cool i know a lot of you guys saw the days of future past x-men movie in the future of that universe you have uh you have the sentinels that created like this perfect version this this perfect sentinel called nimrod and nimrod had like a multitude of abilities right like it could shape shift and take on the form of other people so it could be anybody and you wouldn't you could pass nimrod on the street and never know um it could sense like it could literally analyze a mutant analyze what their power was and analyze their weakness and then use that information to like take them down to say nothing of like all the information it has stored on like the day database of mutants right so like in no storm is claustrophobic because that's one of the weakness that was you know kind of assigned to her or at least was discovered by her just in her years of being part of an x of, of the x-men and so on and so forth and so like nimrod can use that against her nimrod knows that like you know cyclops's optic blasts are basically energy from another dimension so like seal his eyes shut or like shoot him in the face and blow his head off i mean like there's a, a, any number of things that nimrod could do but like throw him into the into the like into the events of the mc i mean there's a lot of things that they could do a lot of this would take 
take a lot of building up. And one of the things the MCU focuses on is just like quick, fast, and in a hurry stories, right? So like Infinity Gauntlet took 10 years of building, but like everything that went on with Infinity War and, and Avengers Endgame was background stuff with like all the main stories, right? Like it wasn't like everything led up to it in terms of like, they've been fighting Thanos for 10 years and now Thanos has the Infinity Gauntlet. Like they've been, you know, trying to keep him from getting it. You know, it's just basically him operating in the background and now he had the Infinity Gauntlet and then Infinity War and then Endgame took place. So like, you know, it's, 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 it, it depends on how they want to do it. But like, yeah, I mean, there's, there's stories where Doctor Strange became a, a disciple of Dormammu. He was a student of Dormammu and like killed everybody in the universe. There's a story where uh, Jean Grey becomes the Dark Phoenix and then stays crazy and then destroys the whole universe in the process. You've got Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers where the Beyonders wipe out everything in existence, like literally destroy the multiverse. Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of really dark stories they can do. So like Avengers Endgame isn't even the worst of it. Not by a mile. Like not by a mile at all. You I mean you've got like Fury Secret War. I mean you've got all kinds of like crazy things that go on in, in, in Marvel Comics in terms of dark stories. So yeah I mean just kind of a, you know if any of those kind of ring like any of those strike your fancy like post a comment. And let me know like like which one of those seem the coolest to you. I may end up doing a story on it or doing videos on it. I have I have no idea. I know we're gonna do Phoenix and Dark Phoenix sagas. Um, but aside from that, I mean I'm I'm kind of curious what you all think. But anyway, guys, uh if you are new here to Comics Explain, make sure you guys hit the sub button to become part of the Rob Corps. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you drop a like, and I will catch you all later. Peace.